On the morning of February 23, 2015, five teenagers drove to the end of a quiet street in Millbrook, Alabama, about 10 miles north of Montgomery. The teens, who were armed, broke into an empty house, stealing electronics and money, then went up the block to another empty home. A suspicious neighbor called 911. Well, I think we got them blocked off right now if you're still there. Two Millbrook police officers soon arrived. One went in the front, the other along the side. Gunfire broke out. As the second officer ran towards the backyard, one of the teens, 16-year-old Adante Washington, came through a back gate carrying a gun. The officer hit Washington three times. He died at the scene. Andre Washington is Adante's father. That's a good, good son, good child. Washington remembers his son as a quiet kid who dreamed of playing football for the University of Florida. Full of energy when he was uh, young, just full of energy. After high school, he wanted to, uh, wanted to go to like the uh, Florida Gators. As the shock of his son's death sunk in, Washington learned something else shocking. Though none had pulled the trigger, the four other teens at the house were all being charged not just with burglary and theft, but with murder, the murder of Adante Washington. It's, 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 it's crazy. Do you think the other boys are responsible for Adante's death? No. No. In Alabama, a murder conviction can bring a sentence of up to 99 years. Three of the teens took plea deals. The fourth, Lakeith Smith, was offered 25 years, but he rejected it and took his case to court. C.J. Robinson is the chief deputy district attorney for Alabama's 19th Circuit. He didn't pull the trigger. Mm -hmm. He didn't kill anybody. So how can he possibly be charged with murder? Mm -hmm. I think that's a great question. And you know, to answer that question, you really have to look at Alabama law. When you look at how that law is on the books and how it's applied in Alabama, it goes to the foreseeable factor, all right? In Alabama, the law says all suspects can be charged with murder if a death occurs during a felony that's clearly dangerous to human life. Another legal standard used is that the death was foreseeable. Do I think when I break into this house, an officer is going to come running in and we're going to get in a gunfight? Is that foreseeable? Yes. Robinson also based his decision on the fact that the group was charged in other crimes in Montgomery in the 36 hours before Washington was killed. One defendant pled guilty to murder. Charges of kidnapping and robbery are still pending against Lakeith Smith. When you're engaging in a series of the most dangerous behavior that's out there. The question for us was, is it foreseeable that someone could die based off these five young men's conduct? Our answer was absolutely. Alabama's law is based on something called the felony murder rule, a centuries old legal concept. Stephen Drizzen is a clinical professor at Northwestern University's Pritzker School of Law. So in its purest form, the felony murder rule means that if you commit a felony, and during the course of that felony, somebody dies, you can be convicted of first-degree murder, the most serious crime on our statute books. Um, even if you didn't intend to kill the person who died, even if the death was accidental. 42 states have some form of a felony murder rule, and it's interpreted differently in each. In some cases, it's been used to charge accomplices with murder. So, for instance, if two people rob a store and one of them kills the clerk, both of them are charged with murder. The idea is everyone involved in a felony should be held accountable for the consequences. But some states interpret felony murder more broadly. In rare cases, if the clerk kills one of the robbers, the other robber is charged with murder. Take the case of Justin Doyle in Illinois. In 2008, Doyle, 15 and unarmed, set out to rob a home with three other boys. They thought it was empty. A person staying there shot and killed one teen, Travis Castle. The other three were charged with Castle's murder. Faced with a possible 60-year sentence, Doyle, who got a tattoo to memorialize Castle, pled guilty to home invasion and involuntary manslaughter and was likely to get out of prison in 15 years. Stephen Drizzen got Doyle's sentence commuted by the Illinois governor. Most people are offended by the notion that teenagers who want to commit a burglary can be charged with 
felony murder or first degree murder. The punishment is just much too harsh for the criminal culpability. I want to ask you about why this is an appropriate tool to use. If you are out to commit a crime, whatever it may be, you should pay for whatever consequences arise. The answer to that argument is, is you punish the burglar with the higher range of sentences for the burglary. You don't punish someone for crimes they neither intended or committed. Back in Alabama, even though Lakeith Smith was 15 at the time of the shootings, he was tried in adult court. Brontina Smith is Lakeith's mother. Your son was offered a deal. He was. Plea deal, he did not take it. Did not. Why not? That was my son thing. He was like, I didn't kill anybody. Like, why, why am I admitting to a murder that I know I, I didn't commit? The cop killed him. That cop was cleared of wrongdoing. Lakeith Smith's trial took place in 2018 in rural Elmore County, north of Montgomery. An all-white jury found him guilty of burglary, theft, and murder. You just don't get it, do you? And the judge, annoyed at what he claimed was Smith's disrespectful demeanor, sentenced him to 65 years in prison. What went through your head when you heard 65 years? It was malice. It's like, if you don't do what they want you to do, I'm going to show you. He did commit a crime. He did. And he should have got the proper time for the crime that he committed, the burglary and the stolen property. To 65 years, on a young guy, 15, who didn't kill no one. Didn't kill no one and didn't shoot at no one. Alabama. Yeah. What do you say to critics of this? They say we shouldn't be charging, bringing this charge in situations like that. What do you say? I understand people who may not understand the law or may want the law to be different, you know? If the Supreme Court says it's got to be this way, then I will gladly apply the law that way. Back in Illinois, an investigation in 2016 by the Chicago Reader found 10 cases over the previous five years of killings by law enforcement that led to felony murder charges. One case was that of Tevin Lewis. Pull it over here so you can see. Femi Soyode was Tevin Lewis's attorney. In 2012, when Lewis was 19, he and Marquis Sampson, his close friend since childhood, robbed a sandwich shop on Chicago's south side. Mr. Sampson came out of King Giro and literally ran across the street. And coincidentally, an officer just happened to see him running across the street holding his waistband. And the officer just, boom, started chasing him all throughout these neighborhoods right over here. Mr. Lewis went the opposite way, this way, southbound. The officer shot and killed Sampson. He stated later that Sampson had a gun. I was down the street, yeah. I heard the gunshots, yeah, I was down the street. Even though Lewis was down the street, he was charged with murdering his friend. He spoke to us from prison. Yeah, it was shocking, it was, it was crushing, like, you know what I'm saying? Especially the fact of playing in that he was a close friend of mine, he was my brother. Soyote says he sees felony murder used often in cases when it's one of the felons who's committed a killing. My thoughts on felony murder is the idea behind it, I'm actually not opposed to. But in a case like Lewis's, Soyote feels the punishment doesn't fit the crime. He routinely sees first-time offenders charged with robbery like Lewis take plea deals and serve only a few years in prison. Lewis refused a deal that would have required him to plead guilty to his best friend's murder. A jury found him guilty of both robbery and murder. He received a 20-year sentence that he must serve in its entirety. The fact that Mr. Lewis is doing 20 years is mind-boggling. And for that reason, I know there's, a, there's an issue with felony murder because that just shouldn't be. The officer, meanwhile, was cleared of wrongdoing. In recent years, Chicago has had some of the highest numbers of shootings by police officers of any large city. Femi Soyode says a felony murder charge like Tevin Lewis's adds to his community's distrust of the police. It just further reiterates what people already feel about law enforcement. 
it not only does it reinforce it, it takes it to a new level. It's difficult to know how often prosecutors use felony murder in the U.S., but one report states that nearly 20 percent of murder convictions are based on felony murder. I think the felony murder rule uh, causes people to plead guilty to crimes that they didn't commit um, to avoid extremely harsh sentences. I think it's a big part of mass incarceration. In response to the 2016 investigation by the Chicago Reader, the office of Anita Alvarez, Cook County State's attorney at the time, told the paper, the murder charges are well founded under established law. The current state's attorney, Kimberly Fox, came to office in late 2016. Her office said in a statement that when deciding to charge felony murder, it conducts an additional review process that considers the offender's role and conduct during the commission of the underlying felony, whether he was armed or discharged a weapon, and if he has a previous criminal history. Fox has not used felony murder to prosecute in cases of shootings by the police. But the rule is still on the books in Illinois, as it is in Alabama, where Lakeith Smith is now serving his 65-year sentence. I don't agree with that particular law. It just doesn't make sense. Brontina Smith says her son plans to appeal his murder conviction.